My name is Leah Valerio. I am curator here at the Wild Center. And I have been here for 16 years now, almost 17, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. It seems like a long time and not that long all at the same time. This place has evolved and I have evolved right with it. So it opened in 2006. Um, and, you know, at that point, we were just trying to make sure that we could run the building and do cool programs and have people come visit. Um, we always had a mission of inspiring people to care about nature and the natural world around them. But I think we've evolved to really trying to take into account not just the Adirondacks right here and, and having our visitors care about that, but instilling sort of this value of caring about where you're from and what kind of nature you have around you. Because we get visitors from all over the world, so you might not live in the Adirondack Park, you might live in an urban area, you might live in a suburban area, um, but there's nature everywhere you are and caring about it is important. My mom is fond of telling this story. She says that I came out of the womb loving animals. Um, when I was about three years old, she opened my closet one day and found all of these jars of dead bugs. And what had happened was I really loved the bugs and I could get jars and I could catch bugs in our backyard, but I wasn't allowed to touch knives, so I couldn't poke holes in the lid. So I had all my friends in my closet, but unfortunately they passed away. But I, I've always loved living things. Um, I've always wanted to be around them, and I said when I grew up that I was going to be around all the animals, I was going to have my own zoo. That's what I would tell my, my mom and my dad all the time, and here I am, pretty much, living that dream. So, The Wild Center is so much more than a zoo. It's so much more than just the animals here, although we do have about 300 animals of about 50 different species that are native to New York. We have inspiring people who come from all over to work here to um, help support our mission. We're a zooquarium. We're an environmentally conscious um, advocate for nature. Um, and we're a family, really. One of the things that's really amazing about this place, and, and probably one of the most important things that has kept me here all of these years, is the people that make the Wild Center. It really is a family. Um, we have about 30 or 35 full-time staff. In my department, there are four of us that work full-time. And all of us have been here for several years. Again, I started right before the museum opened, and then I was fortunate enough to, you know, start with, a, most of my staff started as volunteers and interns. So they came here, they were inspired by this place, and they wanted to support it. Our vet tech, Ruth Valentine, started as a volunteer. She had experience with animals and she cared about this place, so she started volunteering. And I could tell right away that, you know, she would be an amazing asset to this place. Hi, my name is Ruth. I'm the vet tech here at the Wild Center, and I take care of the animals' health issues that we have here. The best part of my job is being around the animals every day, seeing them and interacting with them, making sure they're all healthy and that they're not going through stress and other things that might be going on with them, that they're eating properly, that they're pooping properly, and that everything is just copacetic. So I became a veterinary technician at a late age. I'm a, a licensed wildlife rehabilitator. And when I became a rehabilitator, I wanted to provide a better care for my animals that were coming into my rehab center. And so I became a veterinary technician at a late age in life at 40. And then my husband was transferred up here and I came along with him and volunteered at the Wild Center. And when they needed people, that they needed someone to help out with their animals, they thought I would be a good fit. So uh, to me, it's a dream job because I'm working with wildlife and I'm doing my wildlife rehabilitation as well as my veterinary technician skills. I'm using all of those at the Wild Center. Uh, one of the things I love working at the Wild Center is just monitoring the animals and following them along through their lifetime. Because we have, our animals are around us all the time. Some of them have shorter lifespans than others. We have two otters that are in, one's 20 and one's 19. So it's encouraging to see how well they're doing at an older age. And then we have other animals who life's cycle is not as long. Like we have a Virginia opossum who only will live to be two or three years old, no matter how 
how much we care for her and everything is just part of their species that happens to them. When I'm not at the Wild Center, I enjoy being with my, my dog and my husband. I have a two-year-old corgi, and I'm also a certified, a professional certified dog trainer. Boy, the one thing that they probably wouldn't believe is that I, I'm always trying to climb to get into cupboards because I'm, I'm only <laughs> four ten and a half. But uh, also that uh, I'm usually the one that gets to climb in and trying to get the animals. So you know, we offered her a job because she had all this great skill in medical stuff, and that's what we need to help. Part of what helps keep the animals here healthy. So that's how she started. Um, Chelsea Corcoran came to us when she was still a college student at Paul Smith's. She started volunteering first, again, cared about animals, knew this place, um, came and visited and was fascinated by it. And then she applied to be a summer intern. And through that experience, being a volunteer and a summer intern, I recognized very early on that she was an incredibly passionate, intelligent, thoughtful person. Hi, I'm Chelsea, Assistant Curator of Animal Care at the Wild Center. My job is to take care of our day-to-day -day operations and make sure that all of our animals stay happy and healthy. The best part of my job is dealing with these guys. I love working with our birds of prey specifically, and I really love working with them when they're flying. So I've done a lot of free flight programs inside and outside, and for me personally, there's something that's really, really just magical, I guess, is the word to use, about when you have a bird that isn't tethered to you in any way and they can go anywhere they want, but they choose to come back to you. And there's something that, for me, is just really powerful about that. And I think our visitors pick up on that too. It's a really, really cool experience. She did a really amazing senior project at Paul Smith's College studying the um, color site in River Otters. Yeah, so I was coming to the Wild Center four times a week for two years to do this research working with the otters. And so you're training them the entire time to try to figure out how they do the world. And it was a turning moment in my life being able to take the relationships that I had formed with these animals and use them to contribute to what we know about science. What I really like about my job is forming relationships with the animals, so getting to know each one as an individual, their quirks and their needs, and figuring out how we can work together to make that animal's life the best it can. So one of the things the public is surprised to know is how noisy some of the animals can be. Things don't always go as planned. They see us often when we're out with the animals working in kind of pristine conditions and they don't see the unplanned things like when we have to scream over a bird or when a bird poops and it lands directly in your shoe. So I think that kind of unplanned stuff, people see the good things, but like with the toddler, there's a lot of things that aren't quite as good. So I really, like to play games. I know that's a weird answer. Probably people are expecting something animal related, but at home my husband and I have a collection of like 40 different board games. And so we really just enjoy inviting our friends to come over even as adults. Once you get into that board game mode, we all become kids again. And so it's not really related to animals, but it's still really cool. Um, and then we have Nicole Marin, who again, started as a, um, an intern. She's also a Paul Smith graduate. She started in the education department um, and she just, she, she's a shining light. She is so positive and personable and, and passionate about the Adirondacks. Um, and you know, just watching her come into her own as an education fellow was really interesting. And then when we had a job opening, I thought, hmm, I wonder if she'd wanna come over to the animal care world. 
Hi, I'm Nicole. I'm the biologist here at the Wild Center in the Animal Care Department, which basically means my job involves caring for over 600 wildlife species, anything from fish and crayfish all the way up to the otters and owls. And I have the pleasure of sharing these stories of the natural world with all the visitors that come to encourage them to bring conservation to their own backyards. I had a long road to get to the Wild Center and it started out when I was pretty young. In high school, I was able to do a vocational program that got me involved in natural resources before going on to get my bachelor's degree from Paul Smith College, just down the road from here. When I came to the Wild Center, I started off in a seasonal position as a fellow and I was so lucky to be offered full time. And now I hope to stay here until I'm old and gray. The best part of my work has got to be the direct contact with the animals. Over the past couple of years, I've been able to really learn and see how even the same animal, whether it's five snapping turtles or five river otters, each of them are unique individuals with their own personalities that I get to know and work with. Well, people pretty much laugh every time I let them know that I get paid to pick up poop. And that is a big part of my job, not only picking it up, but looking closely at it. Part of our job involves running fecal analysis on our animal stool to ensure that they are healthy and have a good quality of life here with us. We still get to do education in our department, but a lot of what we do is caring and feeding for the animals. So I talked to her about it. She was so excited and she accepted the job and I've just watched her grow over the years into this role. She didn't necessarily come with a lot of animal care experience, but she's an expert now. She's great at both talking to the public and being an advocate and a, you know, a passionate supporter of the animals that call the Wild Center home. I like to remind people that nature isn't Disney. So when I say that, it's usually in regards to a fish that may be deceased in the exhibit, which a turtle is munching on. Now, I get to provide food for the turtles and have to feed them, but those natural foraging behaviors that would occur out in nature are really a beautiful thing to see happen here. The thing I love the most about my job is having the opportunity to share my passion for conservation with all who come to visit us. Inspiring the next generation, especially young women for me, is really what it's all about, to get them involved in natural resources and the sciences to build our conservationists for the next generation. When I'm not at the Wild Center right now, I'm spending most of my time working on my new home and playing with our animals back at the house but most often you'll be able to find me fishing out on any of our Adirondack waters, whether it's in a canoe, in a drift boat, or just from the shore. You'll find me with a fly in my hand. I joke that there's like something in the water here at the Wild Center. Um, as people come and experience it, like we've seen a lot of our staff started as volunteers or interns, or you know, they just knew about this place and, and you know, thought it was amazing and wanted to experience it. So, so we get these people that come here, find that the Wild Center is a really cool place and then want to work here. And for whatever reason, we tend to attract people that are super dedicated, um, that are just passionate about what we do here. And that passion translates into um, being advocates, especially for our animal ambassadors. Um, they're not just animals that you know, are in cages you know, for public entertainment, they are actually our coworkers, and that's how all of us see them. So I think if our animals could talk, number one thing they would say would be, where is my food? They always are like bottomless pits. SV here does a begging call for food when he has a whole mouse in his mouth. So food, food, food. Well, if Louie would be like, where's my food? I want lunch right now. And uh, Luna, who is our Eastern Screech Owl, uh, she's always looking at us like, why are you disturbing me? And I'm always thinking about what those ravens are squawking about, and I think they're asking for more toys. So they're, they're just as hardworking as we are. They deserve as much respect and days off and benefits as we can give them. Um, and I think, you know, our staff are really passionate about that. Um, every single person, even if they're people that work in our department in animal care, to our facilities department, to our development department that does all the fundraising, we all know that these animals are hardworking and they're doing an important job here and that, you know, they deserve the best standard of care we can possibly give them. There we go.
nose. <laughs> That's all. Hey, buddy. Do a quick check, make sure nothing else is bleeding in there, and wake Norris up. So we collect the feathers to send to SIA, the Comanche Nation Ethno-Ornithological Initiative. And we're sending them because native peoples across North America historically have used these feathers for cultural or religious purposes. 